sometimes back his nudes were all over in Kilimani mums and I even ensured that those photos were pulled down. While he was at home, I was here in Nairobi looking for that lady who posted those photos. That's the much I loved him. That's the much I protected his image. I don't think that I get married again. But for him, can get married, he can have a hundred kids. For me, I just want to see my children. I want to guide my children. I feel for my girl. What, what, what kind of woman is she going to be when she will grow up? I feel for my boys. What kind of husbands are they going to be when they grow up? Laws aside, when we are Christians, does it mean for 18 years I did not contribute anything, anything in his life? Then indeed, if I did not contribute anything, let him give me my children. My prayer is to see my children before I leave this world. Even if it's for two minutes, I want to see my children. I want to see my children. My name is Gladys Gesari Nyamwe. I'm 41 years old, a mother of four, three biological, and one adopted. Gladys was married for 18 years, divorced within three months, and everything was taken from her, including her own children. I must say for 18 years, I enjoyed the marriage life. As much as there were ups and downs, the Bible reminds us it's for better and for us. And I always protected my marriage. And because of this, God had our prayers. He answered us and showered us with blessings that after the struggle, eventually we had our own company. After six years of struggle, we had a lot of money and it's because of this money, my marriage sank. The first six years of marriage, he took me to college. I trained, as Anna said, and graduated. From there, we moved to Nairobi. We stayed at Mathare North. I was working in a hospital, I was working in a certain company. And uh, since he realized that I'm capable of doing other things apart from nursing, he introduced me into marketing. He trained me and I became a good marketer. 2010, I got another job in a marketing agency. And after some little savings, I opted to go back to our rural home in Kisi so that we can buy a piece of land of which I did and it was successful. After a few months, I started building and I resigned from my job. 20 11, he started a family company whereby I was a partner. I believe since he's, he was my husband and I, the wife, 
mother of his two children, so I was part of the company. I worked in this company tirelessly, recruiting and training people for promotions and merchandising. I was the regional manager covering North Rift, South Rift, Western, and Nyanza. Now by this time we had two children and they were about to go to school. I mean, my son had already started school. And since we felt like Nairobi is the best place for our kids' background education, we agreed that let him stay with the children while I handle business back at home. So we stayed with the children, but I could visit my kids every weekend. Every weekend I was in Nairobi or any time need arises, I was there for my children. 2017, I adopted another daughter. May she rest in peace. Then, who was ailing from cancer. I struggled with her for five years, but eventually she died and she left me with her two daughters. But the daughters currently are with their relatives. 2018, I saw a clip on Facebook Kids eating Rosko Mawiki from Kisi in a place called Nyatieko. Since I have that heart and I'm philanthropic and anyway, God had already blessed us with the food and financially we were stable, I felt like it was right for me to go and rescue these kids, of which I did with the help of some friends. We brought the kids to the Kisi Referral Hospital. They stayed there for three months. During this period, I was the mother to these kids, babysitting them. Since their mother was not there, they only had their grandma. I remember one day, I was approached by a lady and she told me, Mom, can I assist you in help uh, in raising these kids? I told her it was okay. During our talk, the lady told me she is called Vena. So in my heart I was like, my late Vena is back again. The kids were eventually discharged and they were handed over to me. Through a WhatsApp group, I was approached by the director of Akina Ties, Madam Lillian Marrow, who wanted to have the kids since she has a rescue center. So I followed the rules. I took the kids back to the village. The chief was informed and I handed the kids to Akina Tais. Now for Vena, the girl who helped me at the hospital, I felt it was good for me to appreciate her. And I appreciated her by giving her a job in our company. During that time, it was our company. I trained Vena in Kisi and she was posted near Ururu, where she worked for four good months. The fifth month, she was transferred to Mombasa, whereby my sister, my younger sister, she is a regional manager. On 4th Feb, 
February 2019, I received long messages from my husband, the director of the company, claiming that I wanted to kill him with the, the Sungu Sungu people. It's a notorious group from Kisi that Vena was the chairman's daughter. Well, for me, I really know. I gave Vena a job because she helped me. I tried to argue out my case, but it didn't work. So investigations started. After writing a lot of statements at the CID Kisi, Vena's father came and proved that she was not part of the Sungu Sungu team. To date, I don't know why my own sister, my younger sister, whom I loved so much, whom I raised in my own house, decided to lie, decided to come up with a killing story. It's on her and the director who can tell us why they came up with this story, I mean killing story. Killing the man who married me, the man whom I've stayed with for 18 years, and not only that, the father of my children, the man who shaped me to be who I am today. I had no reason whatsoever to kill my husband. And from here to heaven, God knows that I've never thought of killing my husband. From there now, my life took a twist. I think uh, because of uh, money, I must say, or infidelity issues, maybe there was a mistake he was trying to cover that made him come up with this story. Killing allegations. Anyway, that was in Feb. Vena was sacked. I mean, I had no way to protect her. Whatever that I tried to prove landed on deaf ears. March, I received a lot of threats from my husband. He knows what he did to me on 29th December. He knows what he did. If he is listening, he knows. It's God, him and me, that we know what he did on 29th December 2018 was not godly. And it is something maybe later in life I will forgive him but I will never erase it from my heart. Sometimes we forgive and we don't erase things. It will torture me to death. And, and somebody said somewhere that there are no worst enemies than uh, blood brothers. Through my experience, the worst enemy is your own blood. I'm not hurt that he's married. I'm not hurt he had other women, you know. But I'm hurt my, my blood relative my own sister. <laughs> my sister and I, anyway, maybe as time goes, I will forgive her, who knows, as time goes. But 
it's painful. It's painful. When you know that you suffered because of your own blood. Very painful. Very painful. I don't know whether she wanted to get married to him or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why she chose to fight me this much. She's married, I'm married. So I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe she will get a chance. She will tell us the reason why. She fought me this much. Remember there is a time I found uh, some chats. Eh? You know, now they were talking about me and my sister was like, Chief Wamekuja, so they were referring me as Chief. Chief Wamekuja. As my own sister. Asking my husband, Chief Wamekuja, na kukwangu. <laughs> Maybe she has one. Maybe she never wanted me to be with her. My children, she never wanted me to get married. Okay, she has one. So what next? Now that she has one, I'm here. So what next? Is she happy? Okay, after being happy. So there were a lot of infidelity issues. A lot of infidelity issues. I remember there is a time a certain lady, a friend, a workmate, came to my home and told me point blank to my face, I've been having an affair with my husband. <sighs> he didn't do anything any since she was not the first one. But I must say that this lady kind of uh, opened my eyes. She kind of opened my eyes. I remember her telling me, I remember that, that there is a time you know, that I, 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 I wanted to spill the beans like what is happening. I mean, what he did, it was unbelievable. My phones were taken by the deputy account commander, DCCIO of Kisi, for forensic investigations. So for me, I, I, you know, I was like, now since they have taken the phones, they are going to show whom I've been communicating with. Uh, the location, you know, because with the smartphone, they can sh show the location. <laughs> but that was uh, a plan, because uh, I've never received those forms. I've gone to that office several times until that boss who took the forms was transferred. So. I wonder why I was not arrested since they took the phones and he had evidence that I wanted to kill him. I say that was not enough. He went, bought a banky, and then took it to the CID. And what did he say? I'm part of your bank kwa nyumba. Nilikuwa ni memtega nayo and it's like one in a water. I was called by the D. The CID again. I went there. Uh, I was too emotional. But they listened to me. They did their investigation. And funny enough, he bought it and he decided to bring it as, I mean, as evidence, to plant some evidence. To me. I don't know why he was doing all this. I don't know the reason why he never wanted to own up his mistake. 
I don't know the reason why. He was he's fighting me so much to cover his own mistake. I mean, your mistake is a mistake. Sometimes back his nudes were all over in Kilimani moms. Yeah, I was still married. That was in 2017. His photos when put in Kilimani moms. I was in the front line protecting him. And I even ensured that those photos were pulled down. While he was at home, I was here in Nairobi looking for that lady who posted those photos. That's the much I loved him. That's the much I protected his image. During that much, I moved out of the house now that he was threatening to kill me. He was saying, I normally bring men at home. I'm a drunkard. I'm not a drunkard. We had a bar in our house. Alcohol will expire there. I don't drink. But he decided to lie. With the intervention of his relatives, the priests, he refused to listen to any of them. So I was advised by the priest that the way he's raging, anything can happen. Just take a break from your marriage. Go to your parents or somewhere. Just take a break. Sadly, when I called my parents, my husband had already brainwashed them. He had already told them, I'm a witch. So my parents listened to him more than to me. My family was divided. So I was left alone. April, I went to Nairobi to visit my kids. I was arrested on 16th as my children watched through the window. When I entered the gate, the house girl told me, Baba came and listened up and I was like, why? Then when the kids saw me, I remember my son closing the, the window. So, so I walked straight to the servant quarter. Since we were not in good terms, I told the kids through the window to, to call him, of which they did. While at the servant quarter, I was approached by two men and a lady. I didn't know that they were policemen until when they introduced themselves. So they told me they have been ordered. They take me to the police station. I told them, this is my house, what have I done? And they were like, are you sure it is your house? So one of the policemen left, and then he came back now with my husband. I remember him asking him, is she the one? And he was like, fanyeni vile muliambiwa. So I knew that they were sent. So I was escorted to the Langata police station. On our way to Langata, I must say the policemen were so kind because they told me, Pigia watu wenu simu wenye wakukaribu, wakusaidi. So nilwa pigia simu. I was taken to Langata. No obi was booked. I was uh, taken into a room, locked there. Then later, uh, a lady came. I guess she has a rank there. She asked me some questions. I remember her telling me in Swahili, 
kama umeachwa si uende ni nini unashikilia huyu bwana kama hakupendi achana na yeye enda ufanye maneno yako mengine si yako na watoto and i was like we only have issues and you are trying to iron them the lady told me where enda akutaki i was very emotional because i never expected this from a lady a police woman and who doesn't know me we are meeting for the first time instead of her maybe asking me what happened she was my enemy for no reason thanks to my cousins who were policemen here in Nairobi they came demanded for an obi which was not there and thanks to the DCIO from Kisi who by then had known what i was going through called the OCS here in Nairobi Langata and i was released i went back to the house with my cousins to collect my bag i met my husband standing at the gate he gave me my bag and my small girl was standing there i think she thought huh? mama is coming back but she was pushed by the dad huh? when the dad saw my cousin's car she pushed my daughter back to the gate that was on 16th april when i saw my daughter I will never see her again. I went back to Kisi frustrated, feeling shattered, hopeless. And I felt like death was the only thing now I have. I called some nuns who came and comforted me. In May I received redundancy letter from the company that I worked for 10 good years a company that I knew I was part of it I was served with a divorce case and a children's custody case now all these cases they were filed in Nairobi no relative knew what was going on cuz he was doing these things privately and he never wanted anybody to know so whoever who tried to question him he could do messages to me i mean bad messages i mean questioning me umewaambia ndio wanifanyie nini kwani wao ndio walikuwa wama ni mimi So at some point I stopped talking with the relatives. Children custody cases started in July. I attended, remember now that I'm not working, but I attended here in Milimani Nairobi. I came and filed my divorce. And I left. August on 5th divorce case also started as i was coming to nairobi i lost my grandmom that night i arrived at milimani in the morning hours i think because of the the the, the cry my eyes were teary so i could not read my name on the notice board So later around 10 I called my brother and he told me no you take your time your name is there just take your time so at around 11 my cousin came and yes when he read the notice board <laughs> my name was there but it was in initials 
So he went straight to the court where the case was apparently the magistrate had already left. But I was told I was supposed to come in September. I don't know, for the second hearing. I don't know, what, whatever they call it. When I went back to Kisi, after the burial of my grandma, I sank into depression. Thanks to the church, Nyabururu, priests, Sister Michaela nuns, who came to my rescue and took me to the convent where I stayed from August until January under medication. You know, when you are depressed, eh? it's like your brain is paused. You don't know what is good, what is bad. You cannot tell, you cannot differentiate like night and day. So you, you, you are just there. You are just there. And the, the, the worst experience, I think, it's those drugs. They make you feel more useless. You are more useless because you can't do anything. You are just there. So during this period, I cannot tell what I was doing. I can't tell. I cannot tell who visited me, who I was talking with. I cannot tell from August, I must say August to December. I can't tell who I was. So in January, 2020, I started looking for my family. During December, when I came back, like I used to have kids, yeah, they, I talked to my brother who texted me my husband's uh, telephone number. So I did a text to him. I remember him asking me, now that you are divorced, don't have a job. Unafikiriaje maisha yako? As we were chatting, I didn't know that I'm divorced. So we kept on chatting. And then all of a sudden, he changed. He again started uh, abusing me. So at that point, I had to put the phone off. January 2020, I went home. Now my dad was looking for me. We agreed to meet. I met my dad. We talked. Then I remembered I had kids whom I took to the rescue center. I went and visited the kids. Thanks, Akinata, because you are there for me. The kids I rescued finally gave me a home when I was homeless. Later, after one week, I met my dad. We talked and I told my dad what I've been going through with the help of my brother, whom I'm very close, close, close with, Duke. Duke explained to my dad every detail. March, my dad called my former husband so that uh, we can uh, have a sitting and talk because whatever he's been telling my dad and what I told my dad, those were two different stories, but he refused. I remember him talking arrogantly to my dad. So in May, I told my dad, please dad, 
call my husband and ask him the dowry he gave you did he pay for me or for my younger sister my dad was in shock but he called him and when he called him he didn't respond he went mute after that that was me june my dad fell sick he sank into depression and in july he died i lost the the person who could have saved me solve this riddle the one person who listened to me and knew the real truth that's how i lost my dad but remember my family was already divided he had already divided our family so the other side of my family they said i'm the reason why my dad died true yeah i was the reason why he died why he sank into depression and after the burial my daughter the adopted daughter called me and told me that now he, she was being harassed by the man she referred to dad he sees the paying school fees for her but thank god she picked herself up she did her exam this year she passed and she graduated we thank god for that the only thing right now is she doesn't have her papers i'm told to pay the school fees that was paid for her during our first year and second year so that we can get our form for certificate why help a person then later you demand the help i wish you could have just left it other than now frustrating her Uh when we got married he could tell me oh, I used to have this girlfriend I used to have this girlfriend so so for the 10 years I was in this company his first girlfriend was working with us and I didn't know and I know she's there to date she was working with us and I didn't know I must say that I was too forgiving, too lenient and I kept on saying maybe he will change, maybe things will be better. And you know with the church you are just told to go and pray things will be better. I never thought that the man I loved so much, the man who shaped me, the man whom we could sit and the budget on what to do talk about our future talk about the future of our children call the divorce me and marry a lady whom i know so well i'm well known to her parents we were family friends There are people I trained, there are people I recruited, there are people I helped so much who turned against me. A lot of people, they are there. They are there. Who have dark stories. They turned against me. Reason, they never wanted to lose their job. Reason, they had to protect the boss. So my appeal i want to see my children i'm a mother 
I gave back to my children. I gave back to my children. I tried through some lawyers and the judgment was I had access to the children. Let him have the custody. But now, why are you denying me, my children? They are the only thing I have. I don't think that I will give birth again. I don't think that I will get married again. But for him, can get married, he can have a hundred kids. For me, the three children, I mean, that's my property. That's what I want. I just want to see my children. I want to guide my children. Those children, I mean, there are no things you can go to the market and, and, and we buy. I feel for my girl. What, what, what kind of woman is she going to be when she will grow up? What kind of woman is she going to be? I feel for my boys. What kind of husbands are they going to be when they grow up? Because right now, the kind of environment they are being raised, they have been told a lot of stuff about their mom. I guess they think it is true. And then in future, that's how they are going to treat other women. Because these children, they are my best friends. We could dance together. I mean, my children never see me as, as, as their mother. They used to see me as, as their elder sister. My son, now after getting out of the, the convent, my son used to communicate with me. And when he got to know, he took his phone and I think he threatened him. But then my son had already told me, Baba lituambia wewe ni muenda wazimu. Nikweli mama wewe ni muenda wazimu. I mean, that was a difficult question for me to answer. Because at some point it was, yes, mimi ni muenda wazimu. Because I couldn't. Uh, tell I, I can't tell who I was be, between August 2019 to December 2019. Yeah, maybe I was. I was like, we will not prosper We will not prosper in our education. In fact, when we go to Kifanya, to na fail I don't know if that's how Uchawi works. Like him to Naroga, your own kids. So how can I do that? And at the same time, I'm their teacher. At the same time, I'm the person who wants the best from them. I have never gone to end court. What I did, I went to the children's um, department in Kisi. And they advised me. Of course, they advised me to go to court. But with the, the past uh, experience, there are things that I've seen. He does. They pull me back. Like even if I go to court, maybe. He will still refuse. He will still refuse. He will still refuse. And he told me, Ata ufanya nini? Mimi tundi onitamua watoto wakuoni. Ata ufanya nini? If only he can allow me. 
to be part of raising those children. Just to be part. Just to be part. Just to be part of raising those children. I will not take them, but just to be part. Actually, I normally joke, huh? like when people tell me that, I'm like, they maybe <laughs> the day I will see them, I'll die. I don't even <laughs> I love that energy, you know. Seeing them walking, maybe they are running to me. <sighs> I just afraid to get enough energy on that day. Because that will be the greatest moment in my life. If any of it's going to be like I see them, then I die. It will be okay for me. Oh, yeah. I normally joke that kindly allow my children to see me, then I die. Yeah. As they see me, and then we saw our mom and she died. Better that way. You know, other than them staying blindly, I'm blind, and then they will be told, oh, your mom died. You know. For divorce, the case took just three months. I never appeared in court because I was sick, sunk into depression. I was not given even a spoon, you know. So my, my 18 years was just like that. Like I never contributed in his life. I never contributed anything. My 18 years, he was an office man. I was always in the field. I was the donkey. Had the donkey running up and down, recruiting, training people, you know, taking care of things back at the village, building the homes. But now I'm here, homeless, and I must say childless because. I don't have even my kids. I don't know. Maybe that's what the law says. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. But when we are Christians, laws aside, when we are Christians, does it mean for 18 years I did not contribute anything, anything in his life? then indeed, if I did not contribute anything, let him give me my children. How can I contribute children and I did not contribute anything in building him up? You start from zero with a person. <laughs> the moment wealth starts raining on you, you forget the person whom you started life with at first. If you feel that maybe I wronged you and I didn't know, because sometimes you can wrong a person without knowing, I ask for forgiveness. What you've taken me through it's enough. It's enough. Stop torturing me. Stop tormenting me. It's, you, you've done it. You've won. Now let it be. You've won. Let it be. But allow me to see my children. Those children have my blood. If you hate me, then you hate the children. If you don't want to see me, then you don't want to see the children. Chase them away. 
Why you keep the children of a, of a witch, of a killer, schemer? Oh, why? So my children, know that your girlfriend loves you so much. With all the sins said, only believe that one day you will grow and understand all that I went through. I hope that I will meet you soon before I leave this world. My prayer is to see my children before I leave this world. Niwaone tu nitosheke. Taka kama nitawaona leo nitosheke nijue mko sawa. That will that is it. I just want to see them even if it's once a year. I just want to see my children. Even if it's for 2 minutes. I want to see my children. I want to see my children.